For me, he was not playing football. He was football. He's the best striker's best striker. Best player you've ever seen. Yeah. That good. That good. Wow. If you wouldn't have any injuries or lived in a more professional way, you would have won the Ballon d'Or seven times. Football has given us many legendary forwards, but none have dominated like R9, Ronaldo de Lima Nazario. From the moment he first laced up his boots, he was an unstoppable force. Would he have been the greatest footballer of all time if it weren't for injuries? We will let you decide as we look back at the phenomenon that was Ronaldo. But first, please hit that like and subscribe button to help us on our journey to 100k subscribers. All set? Thanks. Now, let's dive in. After Ronaldo impressed with the Sao Cristobal youth team, he immediately attracted interest from major clubs, which led to his agent rejecting offers from Botafogo and Sao Paulo. Eventually, he got signed to Cruzeiro with the help of his former coach, Jairinho, and he went ballistic on his arrival at the club. On his youth team debut, he scored four goals. After three months at the club, he joined the Cruzeiro senior team on their 1993 summer tour of Portugal, where he scored his first senior goal in a friendly against Belenenses. His performances impressed the coach enough to make him a first-team regular. During the tour, he put on a performance against Porto that was so good that the club had to bid $500,000 for his services, a bid that was eventually turned down by the club president. After returning from the Portugal tour, Ronaldo was treated to regular first-team football, which saw him end the year with 20 goals in 21 games for Cruzeiro. He was just 17 years old. His first senior career hat-trick came on the 5th of October 1993 against Colo Colo in the first leg of the Supercopa Libertadores, which Cruzeiro won 6-1. He would go on to score five more goals to clinch the top scorer award, making him the youngest player to do so in the competition's history. He grabbed headlines back in November by scoring five goals in Cruzeiro's 6-0 home win against Bahia to become the youngest South American in history after Pele to score a league hat-trick. He spent two seasons at Cruzeiro and scored 44 goals in 47 games, helping them win their first Copa de Brazil in 1993 and the Minas JRI State Championship in 1994. Ronaldo joined PSV in 1994 after the World Cup. He was one of the players selected at just 17 years old even though he never got to play. He made his debut on the 28th of August 1994 and he scored just 10 minutes into the game. Football was just too easy for this guy because no one could make sense of the things he did. How do you explain scoring 30 league goals in his first season in the Netherlands that featured 7 braces and 1 hat trick, all at the age of 18? After his hat trick in PSV's game against Bayer Leverkusen in the 1994-1995 UEFA Cup, Leverkusen striker and Germany World Cup winner Rudi Fuller stated in his post-match press conference, Never in my life have I seen an 18-year-old play in this way. We are now accustomed to seeing players dribble the ball past four, five, or six players to score a goal, with football geniuses like Messi, Hazard, Neymar, and the likes making a regular habit of it. But in more ways than one, Ronaldo was very much the first PlayStation player football gave us. His second season with PSV was stunted by a knee injury, but he still managed to score 19 goals in 21 games. Ronaldo won the Dutch Cup in 1996, and he was Eredivisie's top scorer in 1995. He scored 54 goals in 58 games in his two seasons with PSV. During this time at PSV, Ronaldo caught the eye of both Barcelona and Inter Milan, but only Barcelona was willing to pay the then world record fee of $19.5 million, so he joined the Spanish club on an eight-year contract on the 17th of July, 1996. Ronaldo was at his physical peak in Barcelona, with the Brazilian scoring 47 goals in 49 games in just the 1996-1997 season. He helped Barcelona win the 1996-1997 UEFA Cup Winners' Cup and the 1996 Supercopa de España, even scoring the winning goal in the final of the UEFA Cup. He won the La Liga Top Scorer Award and the European Golden Shoe in 1997, making him the last player to score more than 30 goals in La Liga until the 2008-2009 season. He was comfortably picking the ball up from midfield and beating defenders just before rounding goalkeepers to slot the ball in the back of the net. At just 20 years old, he was already touted to become the next football great. The then Barcelona coach Bobby Robson said, I don't think I've ever seen a player at 20 have so much. He was featured on the cover of World Soccer under the headline, The Best Ever? 
Jose Mourinho, who worked as an interpreter at Barcelona, described Ronaldo as the greatest player I have ever seen in my life, adding, I have no doubts, Ronaldo is the best my eyes have seen. And in 2014, he regarded him as the best player post Diego Maradona. One of the best goals at Barcelona came at the Compostela on the 11th of October 1996, where he received the ball inside his half, then evaded a cynical tackle of the first opponent with a drag back before speeding away from another, running towards goal, going past two more defenders in the box with close ball control, and placing the ball in the bottom corner of the net. It's not a Ronaldo goal if the goalkeeper's not lying helplessly on the floor. Robson couldn't believe what he had just witnessed. The goal was said to have been replayed 160 times on the main Spanish television channels in the 48 hours following the game, and the goal footage was later used in a Nike advert with a voiceover asking, Imagine you ask God to be the best player in the world, and he listened to you. There was no doubt. Ronaldo was him. By the end of the year, he became the youngest player to win the FIFA World Player of the Year award at age 20. If you're enjoying this video so far, R9 in the comments below. Back to the video. After some issues with his contract renewal at Barcelona, Ronaldo spent just one season with the Blaugranas before his buyout clause fee was paid by Inter Milan. He came to Inter for a then world record fee of $27 million, making him the second player after Diego Maradona to break the world transfer record twice. He adapted to the Italian style of football immediately, even developing his game to become a complete forward by racking up assists, taking penalties, and scoring free kicks. Halfway through his first season at Inter, he won the Ball and Door and the FIFA World Player of the Year for the second time. He completely dominated the Milan Derby and Serie A going up against legendary defenders like Paolo Maldini and Nesta while destroying them. By now, he was undoubtedly the best striker in the world, and things got better by the end of the 1998-1999 season when he was appointed the new Inter Milan captain. Most players have to make do with a legend status as a result of their club careers while some fall back on the success of their international careers. Whether by luck or ability, Ronaldo is one of the creme de la cremes to benefit from a successful club and international playing career. Ronaldo made his first appearance for Brazil at the Copa America in 1995, where Brazil finished second place. He got his next chance in the 1997 edition where Brazil won the tournament and Ronaldo went home with the Player of the Tournament award after scoring against Bolivia in the final. He carried his form to the 1999 Copa America tournament and Brazil won for the second time in a row, with Ronaldo clinching the top scorer award while scoring in the final against Uruguay for the second consecutive tournament. Brazil won their first ever Confederations Cup in 1997, courtesy of Ronaldo. In a deadly attack combo that featured Ronaldo and Romario, famously dubbed the Roro attack, the duo combined to light defenses on fire, and together, they led Brazil to their first Confederations Cup trophy, with Ronaldo scoring four goals in the tournament, including a hat-trick in the final against Australia to finish as the competition's third-highest goal scorer. Ronaldo's best moments with Brazil came at the World Cup. When Ronaldo entered the 1998 FIFA World Cup, he was widely regarded as the world's greatest player. Jacob Steinberg of The Guardian had to say this, In 1998, no one was as ferociously talented as Ronaldo, whose supernatural mixture of power, pace, and skill had made him the player every child on the playground wanted to be. At the age of 21, the hopes and dreams of a nation rested on his shoulders. Did he deliver? Damn right he did! Ronaldo had four goals and three assists en route to the final, so he was without a doubt a crucial player for the Brazilian squad. So, can you imagine the shock on everyone's face when Brazil's lineup for the final came out and Ronaldo was replaced by Edmundo? Turns out, hours before the final against France, Ronaldo suffered a convulsive fit and had to be removed from the starting lineup 72 minutes before the match. But just before the game started, he pleaded with the coach that he was fine and he could start the match. Brazil lost the game 3-0, and Zagallo, the Brazil coach, admitted the fears over Ronaldo affected his team psychologically. He confessed he would have taken him off after the first half, but was scared of public outrage in Brazil. Even with his major setback in the final, he was awarded the Golden Ball for the best player of the tournament, and he finished as the joint third highest goal scorer. The next World Cup happened after Ronaldo's career-threatening injury, where he missed an entire year of football in 2001, and it ended differently from the first. 
Without him, the Brazil men's national team was in shambles, and they barely survived qualifications. After his revival, he featured in a formidable attack alongside Rivaldo and Ronaldinho, dubbed the three R's, and together they led Brazil to their record fifth World Cup title, with Ronaldo winning the golden boots in the process. He scored against every team in the competition except in the quarterfinals against England, and he tied Pele's Brazilian record of 12 career World Cup goals. Brazil failed to win the 2006 World Cup after being knocked out in the quarterfinals by France, but Ronaldo left his mark on the tournament. With two goals against Japan in his third game, Ronaldo became the 20th player to score in three World Cups, and also equaled the all-time World Cup final scoring record of 14, held by Gerd Müller before breaking it by scoring his 15th career World Cup goal in the round of 16 against Ghana. He was awarded the bronze shoe as the third highest goal scorer. All of these he did while being overweight. The fact that Ronaldo was still dropping defenders and goalkeepers after an injury that left him sidelined for a year and becoming obese as well shows that pre-injury Ronaldo was a cheat code. He was an unstoppable force, and he remains the biggest what-if in football today. What if he never got injured? I guess we'll never know. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and let us know in the comments below, would Ronaldo be the undisputed GOAT if it weren't for injuries? Until next time.